go follow the directions in that, get logged in, get all set up, and keep up with your logins and passwords. There's going to be a lot of information. You're going to have a writing number, a login, and a password for every carrier. So go ahead and figure out how you're going to keep up with that because otherwise you're going to be sitting in a home trying to log in and you are already going to be freaked out. You'll be freaked out more because you can't even get logged in. Okay? And log in in advance. Everybody in here probably remembers that America gives you a 24-hour window before you're able to actually get in there and do work. So as you are getting contract to get logged in. Um, the next thing is get those quote tools, okay? Um, everybody should have them. Everybody does this a little bit different. I like to have, I like to quote on my phone. I'm not a tablet person. I have a touch screen laptop. I pull my laptop out when I'm doing an e app. But until then, I'm, I'm using my phone for everything I need. But be sure you have those quote tools, okay? Um, most of them are websites that you just save to your home screen on your tablet or your phone or wherever you're doing it. Um, a couple of them are apps. Mutual Omaha has an app, it's called Quotes for Sales Professionals. You just go right to your app store, or if you have an Android, I can't help you. Um, <laughs> go wherever you go. Um, and then Aetna has Quotes on the go. So those are two apps. So have those ready. Um, and I recommend go in there and play. You know, play with your spouse, put in their information so you can learn how to use them, right? Um, just play with your parents' ages and things like that, all right? Secondly, um, you want to be sure that you know when you get logged into the carrier sites where to find the EI. If you can't find it, please call your manager, call your upline, call anybody, call me. We will tell you how to find that EI, okay? You just want to know where it's at. Because again, you're nervous. You're nervous in that first appointment. You're nervous in the fifth. If you're like me, you're nervous in the 20th. It took me a while. But knowing where to go to do the EI definitely, definitely helped, okay? Um, the next thing I want to talk about is client worksheets. You need to use a client worksheet in every home, okay? That's how you don't miss anything. So if you had a family member who asked you to help them with life insurance, guess what? You still need to do a client worksheet, okay? And better yet, tell them, hey, perfect. I'm gonna, let me practice on you. I'm gonna pretend like I don't even know you, okay? And truly practice on them. And you're gonna call your upline, your manager, or your hotline, or whatever your team has set up with your family member, friends, information, the same as you would a client when you're sitting at their kitchen table, okay? Um, but you want to use that client worksheet. And me, guys, I keep my client worksheets. Um, I keep them. I have the ones for my very first year. And when I get out in the car, I make all kinds of notes on that thing. I write down the dog's name. I, um, there's one client I have. The, the dog is Bobo, and he has the biggest ears. He's the tiniest dog with the biggest ears I've ever seen. And I, whenever I call her, I'm like, how's Big Ear Bobo doing? And she's amazed that I remember her dog's name. It's on my client worksheet. I'm not that good. Okay, so I, I take down all kinds of notes. If they made um, any kind of special comments about why this was important, um, you know, maybe they lost somebody who didn't have insurance, anything like that, when I get in the car, I'll make a couple extra notes. Because guess what? If they get this crazy idea that they want to cancel their policy, I'm going to remind them, use their own words, bring out bring the emotions right back around why this was important so those client worksheets are important when you're new there are there are so many different variations out there and they all work but when you're new I really recommend using one that has all of the medical conditions on because when you're new you don't really know what to ask you don't know what the applications are going to ask so that can help you a ton so be sure you have those printed and ready to go okay um, as you get more seasoned, if you like some of the other ones better, change up. That's completely up to you. Just be sure you're using one in every appointment. The next thing I want to talk about, guys, are these underwriting grid sheets. These things are a game changer that Chantel and I did not have in the beginning. So please, please take advantage of these things. We used to do things the very hard way with all the underwriting guides, using a paper app to go and find the question. Oh my goodness, it, we had to learn underwriting the hard way. 
you guys have got it way, way easier with these underwriting grids. Um, a lot of people like to have them electronically, that's fine. And my son's probably gonna groan when I say this again. Print them out. You are gonna end up somewhere in the boonies where you're not gonna have a connection and you will not have your underwriting grids. Even if you leave them in the car, at least have them printed so you can go get them if you need them, okay? Because it happens, it happens, it happens. Um, those things are amazing if you can't reach anybody or if you've been doing this a while, you can start to figure out your own underwriting. Those grids make life so much easier, so much easier. Um, another very important thing I think is I like to have my license printed. And how many of you have seen the credibility sheet that um, Family First Life puts out with all the logos of all the carriers? Okay, I have a clear folder. I have my license on one side, I have the credibility sheet on the other. When I first get in the house, I'm gonna show the lead, here Tara, this is the information you send in. And then they're like, yep, okay, perfect. I always like to make sure I'm in the right house. They usually buy. And the next thing I'm showing her, my license. <coughs> I wanna show you my license. I am licensed by the state of North Carolina. You should always be sure you're working with the licensed representative. <coughs> and if you'll flip that over, you can see I work with Family First Life. And it's through them I work with all those A-rated insurance companies because literally one size does not fit all. I, you see how easily I say that? Because I say it in every single house. Those two things will give you instant credibility. When you're in your very first appointment, Kevin, you are more qualified than them because you have a license. And you're showing them the license and you're showing them all those companies that you work with. And you will have credibility instantly. Okay, so take advantage of that. And those of you who are new, if you're not using that, as a way to establish yourself as an expert when you get in that house, please do do that. That's the reason we have them. And there have been so many of those because we keep adding carriers, so keep a watch out. They, they update them every time we add new people. So um, make sure you're printing the one that has the most because, again, that, that's a nice, impressive list. <coughs> They're all A-rated. We don't work with the companies who don't pay. Okay? So keep that in mind. Um, then the... Next thing I really want to talk about is how you set up your appointment. When you're when you're new, this is scary. You're probably going to be like me. Your knees will be knocking underneath the table. Mine were, and for a long time. Um, but truly, what I didn't do in the beginning, but what I'm much better at now, is that introduction. Okay. Um, used to. I started with a different company and they preached, you know, building rapport. You had to have 10, 15 minutes of building rapport with the old place. Andrew rolls his eyes. Kevin, too, you guys remember. Um, I really only build rapport as I'm making my way to the kitchen table. As soon as we get there, I'm handing that lead, I'm handing my information, and I'm going right into it. I, I'm there, I've got another appointment. They don't want me there for hours. I'm getting right to it. And it's important that you guys take control. You're in their house. We definitely need to be respectful, but you need to take control. You're the licensed agent, okay? And we do this respectfully by telling them what we're going to do while we're there, okay? And I think we all do it a little bit different, but what I do, I'd be like, Andrew, I've been doing this about eight years. I work with all these different companies because one size doesn't fit all. Um, so what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna ask you a few questions so I can understand your individual situation. That will help me determine which of these companies you might be eligible for. If it's more than one, rest assured, I have that God-given gene because I'm a female to shop for a good deal. So I will do that for you. And if it's a married couple, the husband's laughing way harder than the wife at that, okay? Um, I'll shop for a good deal for you, but my number one goal is to find something that you're comfortable with. I want you to be comfortable with the benefits and how they're going to protect you and your loved ones, and I want it to be comfortable for your budget. So I'm going to show you a couple different options so that you can see how the numbers run, and that way you can give me feedback to help me narrow in on what's comfortable for you. Lastly, it's important that you understand I do not have the power to approve or decline so I'm gonna help you submit a full application today to the company and see if we can get you approved. Does that make sense? And then I say nothing until they say yes. 
I have told them exactly how the appointment's going to go. And I have said we are putting an application. I'm going to find something that you're comfortable with the benefits and comfortable with the price. And we're going to get you submitted, see if we can get you approved and get your family protected. And if you're Jennifer Cornell, who's up after me, and you don't have any life insurance, she will add in, I'm not leaving until you're fully protected. And she doesn't. She's been thrown out of many houses. She looks like a cute little blonde angel. The woman's probably been thrown out of more houses than anybody in this room. Because she really doesn't leave until they make her. Yeah. That's a question. Mm -hmm. Do you get objections at that point where the person will say, oh yeah, I'm just shopping? Not usually. Oh yeah, what do you do when someone's like, well, I'm not doing something today? <clears throat> you know, I'm like, well, I'm office. sorry, I'm confused. If we find something that fits your needs and your budget. And the, if they still sign in, just leave, right? Um, it really depends. If I'm with a married couple, I'm trying to take my vibe off of both. Because a lot of times, no offense to you guys, it's the, it's the men saying that. And the wife is sending this 911 SOS bye. signal. Bye. Bye. Like, I need him to have life insurance because I'm going to be up to creep without a paddle. So I, in every case, I'm really taking inventory of what's happening. Sometimes I'll proceed. And sometimes I'll go. And, you know, when I start to pack up, I usually get... Wait, what are you doing? I'm like, well, if you're not going to take protecting your family serious, I have another family that needs me. Yeah. Now, i got to admit, Ben, I was nervous to say that. I actually heard that, how I say that at the end, directly from Zach Trudowski when he first started saying it. This is way back when. He's now an integrity partner, okay? And I remember just being like, oh, my gosh, I don't think I can say that. You know, I'm, I'm this sweet little southern lady. I was raised in the south. We're polite to an extreme, to our detriment, right? If you're not nice and polite, mm, it was hard. And I was like, I don't think I can say that. Because I was like, everybody's going to say no. So I remember calling Zach on the phone and being like, Zach, do you really say that? Because I didn't think he did. I thought he just said it for the training. <laughs> I mean, just to be honest. I thought he said it because he was training in front of a bunch of people. He was like, no, I really said it. And now more, I'm doing more applications than ever before. I'm like, what do you do when they say no? He goes, they don't say no. It's actually a rare occurrence. If you have an introduction and you present it with confidence and a professionalism, they're not going to say no. Chantel, do people tell you no? No. Do people tell you no? Do they tell you no? Do they tell you no? They don't say no. I mean, if you went to the doctor, would you say no? I don't want to hear what the doctor says. I want to hear what the nurse says. No. Yeah, you're the professionals. And then it just goes from there. Start asking the questions. And then call your upline. Is anybody nervous about calling your upline from home? So one thing that I recommend saying, because Dom is always like, just tell me you're new. I never told anybody I was new. I was already nervous enough. I didn't want them to know I was new. No. So I always tell my team, just say something as simple as, I'm just going to check in with my product specialist and be sure what I'm thinking about is the best option for you. Because nothing in that statement says I'm brand new. Nothing in that statement says I have no clue what I'm doing. Right? It says I care enough about you to be sure that we're going to do the best thing for you. Yes. Um, I'm not nervous about making that first call, but I'm nervous if I have to make a second call. Like, what do I say? What scenario am I in right there? Yes. And how do I get Thank you, Miss. Okay. I love that question. And I was going to get there, so perfect. I think it's really important, too, that if you are not doing an electronic application, if you're not doing an app right then and there, if they don't say, I want this one, when you adjust the prices and they still don't say, I want this one, and you're not doing an app, please, please, please call again. Call again from the home. When you leave and you get in your car and you're a block away and you call us, we can't help. We can help you try not to make the same mistake again, but we can't help that family get protected. You've got to call us a second time. 
Chantel, I know we've talked about this countless times. Really and truly, if you call again and you can say something as simple as, I'm just going to check with my manager and make sure there's nothing else that we can do. And just call. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. Yes. And guys, I call Dom from home. Talk about uncomfortable. I put him on speaker one time and he, oh man. But you know what? The guy did the app. Because Dom went where I wouldn't go. The sweet southern lady. I couldn't go there. Dom was like, you seriously are going to leave your wife so she has to get married again? Oh, <laughs> I was all good. I was sitting there like, oh my God. But you know what? We did the app. Okay, if you call me, I'm not going to be that bold. <laughs> but we can, there are things, we've been doing this long enough, we've overcome more objections. There are things that we can say. We'll have you put us on speaker. And then the good news is you hear us as we're doing it. So guess what? The next time that happens, you've got something ready to try yourself. Because that's the whole point of this calling, right? Is for you guys to learn how to deal with us. Any other questions? Well, yes, yes, sir. Uh, I had an appointment the other day where I said it with the lady, the wife, mm -hmm. and um, anyhow, the husband wasn't home, and okay. she didn't communicate anything with him. Okay. She was taking care of the kids. He was the breadwinner, and she was concerned that, you know, say he got hurt, unemployed, or killed, well, what is she going to do? I was like, all right, you know, did my tie and set the appointment. Um, showed up um, and the husband answered the door. One of the times was like, all right, you're going to let your husband know? Yeah, he was surprised. And he's like, you know, who the hell are you? Essentially, I was like, hi, I'm Nick, you know. Yep. <laughs> you know what else am I going to do? Um, in that case, what is the best way to handle it? You know, his, his, his reaction was, we're having family problems. But she was standing behind him going, like, I didn't know he was going to act this way. Oh, yeah, so. that happens. Usually in situations like that, I just, I kind of joke around. I'm like, surprise. <laughs> like, it's a surprise party or something. Hey, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Where's the cake? No, but um, if, if you're getting attitude, I just say, hey, I'm just here to help if I can. If it's not a good time, we can always try it later. I, I don't normally say. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I did. I was, yeah. It's like, what else did I do? And one thing I say a lot on the phone is be sure you tell your husband or your wife so I'm not a surprise. Yes, Marcus? That was going to be my question, but when you were saying the appointment, mm -hmm. you're asking about the spouse being there, that might help. Yep. I always say be sure you tell them. All right, guys, I have one more. Okay. You have a five minutes. No, um, actually, I don't because we oh, typed up, but go for it. Okay. Quick. What's your door knock? What do you say when you door knock? So, Misty, you don't answer phone numbers you don't know, right? And I'm showing you the lead. Um, me neither. I've been trying to reach you about this important information. It takes about 15 minutes. I can do it an hour in about 30 minutes. Which works better for you? That's it. And I totally stole that from Mike Pearson. 